you ever considered that we are living in a unique time, that something world-changing is about to happen, and that it might concern you? If so, you're in the right place. Keep listening, and you'll hear thought-provoking views behind the news that point to a new and better future for all. Many people now sense that humanity is not alone. So consider this. If the Christ or the Buddha walked among us today as modern men, would we recognize them? What would they be saying? And most importantly, would we listen? Every Sunday on this program, Share International Radio will examine extraordinary events that are unfolding behind the headline news. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. And now, welcome to this week's show. A new and better future for all. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Share on the Air Radio. My name is Cielito Pasquale. I am podcasting from Seattle, Washington, here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States. I want to thank you for taking the time to tune in and learn. To learn you're going to learn a lot of new things today. Uh, if you find what you hear today powerful and relevant, please share the link to this show with your friends. Follow us on Facebook, Share on the Air Radio North America. Invite your friends to follow us on Facebook, and better yet, share our website, shareontheairradio.org. I alternate co-hosting duties with my friend and co-host Diana Gold Holland every Sunday, uh, 1 o'clock Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern. We present thought-provoking views behind the news, very specifically from an esoteric perspective. And this podcast is inspired by Cher International Magazine and the writing of esotericist and author Benjamin Krem. All of that information um, on, on uh, the magazine and on Benjamin Krem can be found at share-international.org. And our show is based on three premises. One we are never alone. Humanity has never been alone in the entirety of, of its evolution. Two, we have help of an extraordinary kind. And three, the solutions to the world's greatest challenges are within our grasp. And all of this, we believe, is, tr- is due... Uh, we believe it's true. It's due to the presence and active work of great teachers, very, very advanced elder members of humanity who are emerging into the modern world to guide humanity uh, towards the restoration and rehabilitation of our planet on the basis of the very powerful spiritual principle known as sharing, the principle of sharing. And uh, this event... This emergence onto the world stage of these great teachers is described simply as the emergence of Maitreya, the world teacher, and the masters of wisdom. This story has been presented to the public in the most grassroots, non-corporate, 100% volunteer effort for nearly 40 years, and the story has reached likely several hundred million people around the world, including you today. Uh, so welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm very happy to welcome back William James Allen to our show. This is his third visit. He is a writer based in the Bay Area, trained as a journalist, also a supremely skilled carpenter, I want to add. And he is a longtime student of the Ageless Wisdom Teachings, and that's the body of teachings uh, out of which uh, uh, this whole story emerges from. Uh, uh, William has given numerous talks and written articles on the central premise of our show, of course, that being the emergence of Maitreya, the world teacher, and the masters of wisdom. William, welcome back. Glad Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you again. We have a full show, so we're going to dive right in. And bef- uh, just very quickly, I want to tell our audience that um, all this information – uh, the, the most in-depth information on the emergence of Maitreya can be found at share-international.org. 
So today we are talking about um, Brexit, and I entitled this show Divided, Charting the Effects of the Sword of Cleavage on World Events. And we've talked about world events before on our, our prior shows, um, and I'll, I'll later on in the show I'll, I'll give listeners – um, uh, how, I'll tell them how to find those prior shows because you always give us lots of just just thought provoking stuff, things for us to think about and really consider. Um, and so today we are focusing on the, what's been in the headlines for the past week, and that is Brexit. Um, some of us may have heard of that. Some of us it may be completely new to us. William, why don't you tell us uh, explain? Uh, what Brexit is and and its significance to not just ordinary people in Britain, but to ordinary people around the world. Why is this so significant? Well, Brexit was uh, the uh, popular title for a referendum that was just held in England where uh, the citizens, uh, by a majority, voted to leave the European Union which Britain had been or England had been a member of uh, basically since its inception uh, decades ago. And the reason it sent shockwaves, I wouldn't say around the world, by the way. I know people would like to say that, but I would say throughout Western uh, industrialized nations is because um, many people believe it is a slap in the face or a bucket of cold water thrown in the face of an institution that many people have lost confidence in, faith in, belief in, and almost exists at this time as an undemocratic body of arrogant, disconnected elites who could care less about democracy and care more about the functioning of markets. So if you look at the way the vote went, you will find that the moneyed classes were all for remain, which was to stay with the union. And when you get outside of London, uh, where the working classes and the working poor live, there was an overwhelming majority who voted to leave because in their view, the European Union exists only to benefit the wealthy at the expense of the working classes, and they are fed up with it, and they've had enough. And uh, I've been following the news. There's certainly a whole range of opinions uh, regarding remaining in the European Union or leaving the European Union. And uh, for the purposes of this show, we focus on what are the underlying esoteric energies that are informing this event and and many changes that are unfolding in the world and the purpose of going into depth with this is i think is is for us to be able to anticipate what's coming up and not be too thrown off by uh what's happening by how the media reports this and and really analyze for ourselves and think for ourselves and consider the information very carefully, as we always invite our listeners to do. We, we share this information not for the purpose of convincing people, but for inviting our listeners to really consider uh, with an open mind and an analytical mind what exactly is happening and come to, a, a, come, come to a, a, an awareness or a conclusion that, that is uh, authentic for oneself. So, I just wanted to say that before we go any further. Why should we be concerned about this event even if we don't live in England? Uh, I don't know that we ought to be concerned about it. From my perspective, we ought to view it. Um, I'm getting some feedback. Are you hearing that? I, I'm not hearing it. Yeah, hearing okay. It on my end. Okay. Um, we ought to view it as another example of the growing awareness uh, of people that the current political and economic uh, social order is breaking down because it is simply not meeting the needs 
of the masses of people around the world. And people also uh, hopefully should begin to understand that we are living in a time unprecedented in human history. There is a tremendous stimulation of the planet happening right now because altogether new and different energies are entering our system from various sources. We are entering a new uh, age, astronomical age, the age of Aquarius, as many people know. And this means that entirely new energies from a different constellation are now saturating our system. And these are stimulating new reactions to life, new awareness about our relationship to ourself and to our environment. At the same time, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show in your intro, there is a great approach happening where for the first time uh, in multiple thousands of millennia, a group of highly advanced, evolved, enlightened, energetically powerful beings are coming into the world and are stimulating humanity as never before. The masters of wisdom uh, are more than just a group of guys who are smart and have a few good ideas and a good rap. They are literally powerhouses of energy and who transmit and radiate their energies out into the world. As a matter of fact, one of their functions is to be the custodians and manipulators of all of the energies that circulate on this planet from all sources. And they work under a plan to stimulate humanity so we can take our next step forward in evolution. And that is one of the things that's happening now. That's a pretty huge thing to be happening right now. And we will continue our conversation with William Allen. In the next segment, we are going to talk about the sword of cleavage, what that means and how we're seeing it manifest in the world. Stay with us. Share on the air radio. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The Awakening of Humanity by Benjamin Krem is a concise, prophetic book about momentous changes soon to occur. It focuses on an unprecedented event, the emergence into full public life of Maitreya, the world teacher. Download the book free online. Visit shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience in all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired, inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. Spiritual, metaphysical, green living, psychic, alternative healing, life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. Conscious Gate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatePR.com. Conscious Marketing for Conscious Minds. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. It's 
to share on the air radio. We're back with William <clears throat> Allen. If you enjoy what you're hearing on this show, you'll want to go to our archives because uh, William Allen joined us on our April 10th show talking about what the media is not telling us about the emergence of Maitreya uh, and the Masters of Wisdom. That is an amazing show. Um, Many things happened uh, that we talk in detail about involving uh, especially the BBC, knowing about the emergence of Maitreya. Um, And then our November 15th show uh, was our first show with William Allen. He gives a little more background about himself, about specific energies, of the uh, of uh, Aquarius, making a distinction between Aquarius and the age of Pisces, and also talking about the energies behind 9/11. So you'll want to check out those shows. But let's continue where we uh, left off at before the break, William. Um, what, I, let's let's just start with an explanation of the sword of cleavage. What is this energy? And how do you see it manifesting through this event uh, that's described as Brexit? Well, uh, when the Christ 2,000 years ago said that he would return in such a time as we think not, he would bring not soft words or spurious peace, but a sword that would set brother against brother, father against son, family against family. Well, what did that mean exactly? A real sword? No, it was a metaphorical reference to an energy. Um, the Christ, Maitreya, is a avatar. And in that sense, it means he is a dispenser and radiator of powerful energies to humanity. And it is precisely the action of that energy that he is radiating into the world today, which we call in the esoteric tradition the sword of cleavage. It's really, believe it or not, an aspect of the energy of love, the Christ principle. And it is stimulating people's inner nature, the good and the bad. There's an old saying in the Bible, the rain falls on on the good and the evil. And it's a similar sort of thing. It is stimulating everybody who loves and works for justice and sharing But at the same time, it is stimulating those who are selfish and greedy and aggressive and violent. It is making people more of what they are. And essentially what this is doing is it is creating a conflict of opposites for all to see. We can now see the choices very clearly. We can go in this direction and follow the demagogues and those who love the old ways of living, um, competition, exploitation, aggression, um, tribalism, or we can choose to align ourselves with those who see a new way forward, cooperation, a sort of holistic view of the world, uh, um, recognizing that we are interdependent, that we are connected to each other, that we are connected to the environment. So it's a choice between separation and integration and interdependence. It's a choice between conflict and harmony. It's a choice between imbalance and equilibrium. And that choice is being so clearly presented to us now in the various leaders who have come forward espousing certain ideologies and in the various um, grassroots movements that are erupting, that are demanding uh, that we completely change our institutions into something more caring and just and cooperative. And what people, uh, I hope, will understand is that that choice is confronting every single person on the planet today. There is no escaping it. Today is the time when humanity collectively has to choose what direction this planet is going to go in. And that is one of the reasons that Maitreya and his group, the Masters of Wisdom, are eager to come forward and begin their work openly because we will then, we will then have a group of advisors who can counsel us on 
what might be the best direction to go in and present the alternatives in such a clear light that uh, it will be easy for pe- most people to decide. So it's an energy that literally divides, but that division is so that the ultimate right choice can be made. I want to... Uh, make a distinction here for our audience, especially for those of us listening for the first time. You described, you used, used the term the, the Christ Maitreya. At the, you used a Christian term and a Buddhist term. Ah. And I just wanted to acknowledge for our audience, I, if we could just explain that very quickly. Um, sure, be happy to. Yes. Well, for new listeners who haven't heard any of our past shows, um, The avatar, the teacher for the new age, the world teacher, as we call him, who is now in the world and is working behind the scenes to transform our lives, um, is the teacher that all of the great religions are waiting for. The Christians are awaiting the Christ. The Buddhists are awaiting the next manifestation of Buddha, Maitreya. They have the name right. The Muslims are awaiting the Imam Mahdi, the Jews, the Messiah. The Hindus, the Kalki Avatar, or the Bodhisattva, these are all names for one and the same individual, the world teacher, who has come into the world and has been here since uh, the mid-1970s. And when that individual comes forward into full public view, people will understand as a result of his energetic actions and his work and his speaking that that is the being that we are waiting for. Both the Christ and the Maitreya in one. Christ and Maitreya in one. As a matter of fact, the Buddha himself forecasts just before his passing uh, that in time another Buddha would come by the name Maitreya who will come into a dark world and inspire it to create a golden future, a golden civilization. And that prophecy has come true. So we have this sword of cleavage, not a real Mm -hmm. sword, an energy that, uh, you know, each one of us, you say, will find ourselves on either side of that sword. That's how I picture it. It's a two-edged sword. There you go. Yes. So on one side is the old guard, the age of of, uh, Pisces, the old Piscean energy. On the other side of the sword is the age of Aquarius, the forward thinking, uh, as you described, the um, uh, interdependent um, focus, um, uh, people working together in cooperation uh, as opposed to competition. Um, It's a recognition of the fact that we have responsibility to each other and to our environment because we are connected to it. Whereas the old guard believes in separation, division, you know, this sort of rugged individualism, uh, which is a code word uh, in this country, I believe, for rugged indifference, Mm. indifference to the plight of others outside of your tribe. Whereas the Aquarian energies and the other aspect of the sword of cleavage is stimulating even more those who believe that it's time to turn our direction before we go over the edge. So you could basically say on one edge of the sword are those who compete and on the other edge are those who cooperate. And that broadly speaking, that's the big polarization and of humanity as we speak. So it's like turning on the light on all the hidden stuff in the corners and um, just, just throwing a light on stuff. There, it's, it, 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 it seems to the, – the purpose of the sword, it's not like then we'll pick up the sword and start wielding it. It's, it's actually just laying out what is reality and then we make decisions based on what we see in front of us. Is, 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 would that be a way of describing the sword of cleavage? Uh, yeah, yes, sure. But uh, turning on the light in, in the sense of we already know that there are people in the world who believe in exploitation and competition and screw over the other guy before he screws you and complacency. I'm all right, Jack. And there are movements everywhere that are calling for a different way. But what this energy does is it heightens it. 
it mm. turns up the volume of it. So people cannot avoid seeing the clear choice in front of them. In- so rather than being an, a nuanced choice, it is going to be a clear tension of opposition, a clear conflict of opposition so that the choice people can see is much clearly defined. Um, so, but is, is going back to Brexit, because we're using that as an example, as I'm reading the articles, I don't, in my view, I don't see it exactly as a cut and dried story of the old guard versus the new guard or the Piscean age versus the new Aquarian energies, because, um, on the Remain side, many young people voted for Remain. And uh, on the Leave side, they're saying, oh, it was all the old people. They're voting against the young people. Um, uh, people are associating the Leave decision as being an anti-immigrant or a racist position. Um, how, how shall we look at that with a deeper understanding? Well... For, for many reasons, it can be seen that, that there should be a class distinction. Uh, certain people, like the young, see and recognize various benefits, uh, such as free travel and the ability to study in, in other schools uh, easily, uh, things of that nature. But the overall picture... Uh, and this is the one that is felt most clearly by the people who are trying to make a living. Um, you know, young people are still in that in that period of their lives where they are, you know, defining themselves and going to school. Oh, we're coming up on the break. Uh, defining themselves. Uh, but it's the people who are trying to have families and make a living that are being um, squashed by the mechanisms of the EU. And after the break, we'll continue with this conversation. We will talk about how Maitreya forecasts what we are seeing unfolding today in the European Union. Stay with us. We're with William Allen on Share on the Air Radio. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Maitreya's Mission, the book by Benjamin Krem is a riveting exploration of life ahead. It reveals how the world teacher, Maitreya, and other ancient guardians of the human race are emerging now and are showing us how to release our divine potential. Investigate for yourself at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. Dr. Kevin here. And I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Ohm Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Thanks for staying with us. We are now in segment three of Share on the Air Radio. I'm Cielito Pasquale in Seattle, speaking with William Allen uh, in a lovely place in in the, the in Northern California, living off the grid as you do. Hey, by the way, I just want to congratulate you on your 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 daughter graduating. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yes, we're very proud. And uh, let's get back to our conversation. I like to, you know, I like to mention the personal things about uh, our lives here, you know, and, and acknowledge that as we're talking about these great global changes. Life goes on, and and uh, uh, kids are born, but babies are born, and then they become kids and uh, young adults, and they're graduating from college, and 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 time goes on, and and the world is continues to be recreated. So yeah, you know. Um, let me just finish up the uh, the sort of cleavage related to Brexit because yeah. I kind of got cut off by the break there. The way to understand the sort of cleavage is to look at the reasoning given by the various Leave campaigners. On the right, the appeal was to uh, a very insulated nationalism, xenophobia, um, uh, fear and anger at immigrants, you know, anti-immigrant sentiment. Uh, and that had the bigger microphone. So you can see the kind of, you know, personal interest side of it in terms of a kind of uh, angry emotional view. But then on the left, there were legitimate arguments made, but they didn't have the voice because the Labor Party is pretty eviscerated right now. There are good arguments to be made because it meant a, lo- a loss of national cultural identity, um, the inability for a people to decide its own fate, and national identity is sacred in many respects. So the left, uh, with a much broader, more holistic argument to be made, um, kind of expressed the other's edge of that sword. They just didn't have the megaphone that the right had. So we're getting a kind of distorted picture from the media uh, as to the real reasons. But there are legitimate reasons from the new holistic uh, way of looking at things uh, that the vote was important as well. Let's talk about national identity, cultural identity from an esoteric standpoint. Why is that important? Especially considering borders change, you know, are nations really that important on the spiritual level? Uh, They are. Um, Cultural identity is uh, created by various energies that influence um, a nation. From the uh, ageless wisdom standpoint, there are... um, various energies flowing into the world that have an effect on people's consciousness. And these energies come in psychically. And various nations grow and mature and kind of take on a cultural identity in response to one or other of these energies. And it kind of becomes ingrained in that culture. And so just as a human being is a unique individual with a unique contribution to give to the world, be it artistically, um, scientifically, mechanically, whatever that is, so too on a higher turn of the spiral with nations. Um, Over time, a sort of group soul gets built up in a nation, and it is usually expressed by the more advanced members of the culture, the artists, the scientists, the true servants of the people, the religious leaders, whatever it is. And that nation kind of gets defined by the beautiful, unique contribution that they have to make to the greater whole. Um, The problem with the EU is that uh, even though it began with a wonderful vision of creating a harmonious interrelationship among the European nations after centuries of fratricidal war. That was a beautiful vision, but the successors to the founders have more and more become influenced by capitalistic market forces, and they see it more as an economic union rather than a kind of unity and diversity among various rich cultures. And so as a result of their, it's an ideology, the globalization and following of market forces, neoliberal economics 
is literally an ideology. And this ideology is being used to squash the national aspirations and the national goals and cultural goals of many countries uh, in the European Union. And so in that sense, um, it is... It is squashing the ability of, of a people, of a country, to define themselves and to go in the direction that their cultural identity and cultural aspirations demand. And maybe to um, uh, re- reframe, uh, thank you for that. That's an excellent, very, very clear description. Um, and I think I'll, I'll take it a little further in terms of Economic forces, market forces that you mentioned are not about recognizing the uniqueness and the, the, the dignity of the human being by any means. And I, I think our audience can understand that uh, starting with very simply the, 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 the way in which um, uh, economic forces will drive down wages, for instance – to try and uh, produce the most at the lowest cost. If that's the priority of, of, of a corporation or of an economic uh, uh, body like the European Union, then um, acknowledging the human as, as having dignity, as in, having self-determination is not going to factor anywhere in that. And so an example is the way the European Union treated Greece. Um, forcing uh, Greece to take out further loans to pay off its debts, driving the country further into debt to to these monetary organizations just to operate and uh, uh, forcing Greece to, say, cut back on health care, cut back on education, to really slash uh, social services in order to service their debt. And that's happening in country after country after country. And uh, we're seeing people rise up against what's called austerity, uh, the whole anti-austerity movement. Uh, people are, are just uh, uh, livid, knowing that uh, there's so much wealth on this planet, and yet it is congregating into the, uh, the smallest number of hands possible, uh, leaving the rest of the planet to fend for itself, um, and resulting in conflicts of, of many different kinds. Uh, so it's it's uh, we're we're in a challenging place to address that. Let's talk about the law of cause and effect, popularly known as karma, um, and talk specifically about what Maitreya's perspective was years ago on on the European Union. You you you've touched on that a little bit. Can you elaborate more on what Maitreya recognized years ago that? Uh, most of the world did not see. Well, uh, in the uh, late 80s and early 90s, um, Share International Magazine uh, published a series of um, articles detailing teachings that Maitreya had given at various meetings throughout the Asian community in London. And in those teachings were his forecasts of trends and events that we could expect to see. And they covered a whole range of subjects um, from natural disasters to developments in geopolitical terms to economic developments to the rise of people power, all sorts of things. And those forecasts were made not through any kind of psychic, uh, intuitional sense that he had. That was maybe a part of it but mainly through his deep and powerful uh, and broad understanding of what we know as the law of cause and effect, which is one of the major spiritual laws governing our existence. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. As you sow, so shall you reap. Those simple little phrases actually refer to a great force that literally controls our lives in very many respects. We make our own lives as a result of our thoughts, words, and deeds. But this happens on national scales as well. Anyway, way back in the late 80s and early 90s, when the subject of the 
um, Maastricht Treaty and various mechanisms of the EU uh, were being debated. He did say that it was doomed to fail, partly because it was he was seeing that the process would lead to what I described earlier, a loss of a loss of national identity because the method that was going to be used to determine the mechanisms of the EC and the EU were based on a blind following of market forces. And market forces uh, involve commercialization and they are literally squeezing the life out of life. They are squeezing the life out of cultures. They are throwing hundreds of millions of people into poverty, as you mentioned, and to impose the rule of market forces on other nations without their people having a say of it. It leads to a loss of self-identity. It leads to disillusion. It eventually leads to havoc and to chaos. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. And he said way back then that the politicians were sitting on a time bomb if they thought that they could create a Euro culture based on market forces. We live on a planet that is the living, breathing body of a great divine being. And we are units in the body of that being. And that being has a plan. The Logos, the Father, Mother, God, has a plan in its mind for the evolution of all life on this planet. And one of the functions of the masters is to implement phases of that plan through humanity. And it is not part of the plan for this planet that Europe should be a 500 million strong, single, homogenous state. And on that note, thank you for that. Uh, We are at our break. And in our final segment, we're going to talk more about what we can do as individuals to learn and grow and take action uh, in this age of awareness to bring about the emergence of Maitreya, world teacher and the masters of wisdom. The Real Conscious Connection, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Share International Magazine is unique in the world today. It draws connections that make sense between headline news and spiritual changes unfolding now on a global scale and explains the forces driving those changes. It may be the message of hope you have been waiting for. Investigate for yourself at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcotte, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, Join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. And we're in our final segment of Share on the Air Radio for today, June 3rd, 2016. And we are with William Allen talking about the sword of cleavage and charting the effects 
of the sort of cleavage in world events. Very quickly, uh, William, talk about, we're in the midst of this very tumultuous, uh, unpredictable presidential election uh, season here in the United States. Where do we see the sort of cleavage uh, making, uh, make, making these big distinctions, these big divisions uh, in events? Uh, well, without endorsing any political candidate, um, I see it happening in the sense that uh, just as with the Brexit vote, what we are seeing in our political process now in the, in the presidential election is the same disillusionment with the current system, the same feeling that the system is unjust, corrupt, rigged politically and economically and people are fed up and are willing to do anything to do something to foment some sort of change and um, when you see the appeals being made by the various candidates um, I can't really see too much of a clear distinction except that I would say from my particular observations that Bernie Sanders to a measure, to a degree, would be expressing the um, the more holistic, um, uh, compassionate uh, point of view, and uh, Donald Trump, and would be expressing the more Piscean, uh, old world. Let's get back, you know. Let's get back to the past. Let's make America great again. Let's become insulated. Uh, point of view. So, uh, you know, there's there's a measure. Uh, you know, it's nuanced, of course. Uh, so that's how I see it in a nutshell. And I'm sure we'll see more as the weeks progress uh, around the elections. Uh, when, uh, let's see, where... You you shared with me a quote from Maitreya that comes from uh, one of his 140 messages that can be found at share-international.org. That I found that quote really powerful, very pertinent to what we're talking about today. Um, share that with our audience. Uh, I'll have to. You'll have to refresh my memory and tell me which one you meant. Oh, the, you, we were talking earlier about uh, institutions. When when institutions uh, become. Uh,